Hello divers, this is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips and techniques video. The subject of today's video is how to assemble back mount doubles, also known as twin sets. In keeping with the philosophy of this channel, we will be discussing some uncommon techniques which will facilitate this process. The following parts are required to assemble a twin set. One of the decisions that you must make is whether you're interested in using 5 16 inch or 3 8 inch studs. In general, 5 16 inch studs are generally used for aluminum tanks and lighter steel tanks while 3 8 inch studs are used for larger heavier steel tanks. Here are the parts from the previous screen. Note in particular the valves. In order to assemble a twin set, you must use a left hand and a right hand modular valve. Here are the basic steps to assembling the twin set. To prepare the stud, a nylon lock nut needs to be installed on the stud approximately one inch from the end. After installing the lock nut, the next step is to grind or file a flat on the end of the stud. This will be used to help tighten the stud at the end of the assembly process. What we're going to do next is to install the isolation manifold onto the tanks. Uh, I prefer to do this uh, while the tanks are vertically on the floor uh, for a few reasons which will become apparent in a moment. Uh, but uh, here is our, um, here is our uh, isolator manifold and when you put this on, uh, sometimes what happens is you have to start maybe a half a thread on one side uh, before engaging the other side. Otherwise, you have to have everything perfectly lined up at the same time. All right, so um, I, have, uh, I have my manifold here, and uh, I have moved my locking nuts uh, back a bit. And I'm going to start rotating, and so after you do a turn or so, you want to make sure that everything is actually engaged, and then once you've done that, you're good. And so what's going to happen is, as I rotate, um, as I rotate the uh, isolation manifold, uh, the tanks are going to come closer in to each other. And sometimes you have to uh, wiggle them a little bit to make sure that they're they're not getting um, they're not going to bind. And uh, you have to pick a point at which to stop uh, rotating. And uh, I usually uh, start with a point. Uh, I stop where it's the space uh, between uh, the gap here is about uh, about 50% of the width of the nut is where I usually start. Um, and of course, uh, as we go and we put the tank bands on. Uh, we might have to adjust that. So uh, what we're going to do uh, next is we're going to put uh, the tank bands on and uh, here's a tank band and this particular tank band has the non-skid uh, material put in there uh, that you can see what that is uh, in the uh, galvanic uh, corrosion dissimilar uh, metals video that I have on and so this is uh, one of the ways that um, the way I do the tank valves uh, differs quite a bit from other things that uh, other ways you might see people do things on YouTube okay so uh, I again still have the tank standing up and I've taken out the stud okay that's right there and uh, I'm going to start moving this down to the approximate position of the lower tank band and so since the non-skid here is positioned in there, I don't have to worry about my insulating material uh, getting misaligned. Uh, it's all there, and I can very easily slide, slide the tank band down into the approximate position uh, here. So that was very, very easy to do. And uh, I'm going to do the second one, the top tank band, and I'm going to go down there. And you can tell whether or not you have this... Uh, at the approximate correct uh, dimension uh, turn wise with the manifold distance you can tell that uh, by how easily the tank bands go down uh, the how easily the tank bands go down the tank so if you have some issues with that 
then your tank bands uh, or your manifold might be uh, too tight here or too loose. Uh, but if your tank bands can slide up and down easily, as you can see here, then I know that I've got the approximate starting position. Okay, so uh, you can uh, you can then uh, go on to the next step involving sticking the uh, the bolts in here. Uh, one point about this, uh, some people prefer to have their manifold loose, uh, some people don't. Uh, if you don't want it loose, uh, you can uh, tighten the uh, retaining nuts of the locking nuts here uh, against there and you can do that with a wrench or uh, if you really wanted to make it tight. And then the other issue is some people like their uh, like their manifold knob uh, up and down and some people like it tilted slightly. It's all personal preference whatever you want to do. Um, back to the issue about the tank band, uh, the tank valve um, being, uh, being loose. I think uh, there has been discussion in the past about if it's not tight that if you hit some obstruction uh, that uh, it will rotate slightly uh, to, uh, to uh, not cause any other issues with that but it's a, entirely a personal preference. I personally have not uh, well uh, have not had uh, that issue. So um, I usually uh, I usually lock my uh, nuts uh, either vertically or uh, in a position uh, that is slightly forward that's maybe slightly easier to uh, to grasp. Okay, so on to the next uh, on to the next section of the video. So we're ready to tighten the tank bands uh, on the tanks now. Uh, I have. Uh, position the uh, top band around the crown of the tank and uh, I have uh, positioned the uh, bottom band uh, so that there's an 11 inch spacing uh, between the two studs. Uh, again we'll have to uh, check that uh, to make sure that everything uh, is still good with that once we start tightening things up. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a vice grip over here um, on the flat that I ground uh, previously. So um, since I've got the flat uh, here, uh, when I put the uh, when I put the pliers on the lock jaw pliers on, uh, I won't damage the threads. So in the odd event that I do need to uh, take those off, uh, I will not have damaged threads. I have my um, quarter inch uh, driver here. The quarter inch square drive deep socket is not long enough for studs normally. So what I'm using right now is a half inch drive, uh, square drive, half inch socket with uh, two adapters to go to the, uh, the quarter inch. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start tightening this. And uh, Again, you have to uh, you have to be careful that um, the uh, positions do not shift. Okay, I'm not going to tighten it all the way up. I'm going to snug it up a little bit first, though, and then I'm going to uh, go down and I'm going to do the bottom one. And again, I'm going to use the vice grip, so I'm going to snug this up. And again not quite all the way and uh, what I want to do here uh, is uh, two things I want to check to make sure that the tanks are still square so I can do that by laying the tanks down and uh, making sure that they're they're flat and then the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I still have an approximate 11 inch spacing. Okay, so looking pretty good with the spacing there. Okay, maybe a 1 32nd of an inch off, but pretty close. Okay, so now that I'm square and I've got the correct distance, I can go ahead and snug up this the rest of the way with my vice grips. and my ratchet driver. Okay.
getting a little bit of movement here. I need to adjust my okay. And I'm torquing that down. Without a vice grip and flats, it's very difficult to get the sufficient torque on here. Okay, so that's it for this phase of the project. For the last, for the part, last part of the project, of the project uh, we're going to verify that uh, the length of the stud uh, is uh, adequate. So um, we're going to try uh, some different uh, plates on. The plates are fairly critical because if you're going to be using your uh, twin set with a variety of plates like we do, uh, then you have to uh, verify that, um, that uh, the studs are set correctly. So uh, I have one plate here, and uh, this of course is a non-DIR rig, and we're going to check this one here. And uh, when I push this down, get all this stuff out of the way, it's fighting me. You can see that um, there is uh, a significant uh, amount of stud left uh, with this particular uh, stud length and this plate. And uh, you would uh, be uh, possibly in danger of uh, having your exposure suit uh, on here. Uh, rubbing against uh, this part here, the end of the stud. Okay, so um, that may or may not occur. You don't know uh, until I were to uh, try it on. Okay, but the point is uh, with this particular plate, because of the angle of the groove here, the keel part, uh, I have a lot of uh, stud exposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put on another plate to illustrate uh, this issue. So here's another plate. This is uh, pretty much a DIR configuration. And in order to get uh, enough thread here, I really have to push down on here. And even then, I only have maybe three or four uh, three or four threads on here. So uh, the plate shape of the dive right is significantly different than the earlier plate. And so uh, if this were my set uh, that I was using exclusively with this, I would probably want to make the stud here um, out, come out more about a quarter of inch or so, and maybe an eighth of an inch here. And I do not have any issue uh, with uh, making contact with a stud. So uh, if you're only going to be using one plate, if this is not too much of an issue. Once you adjust it, you're good. But in our case, uh, since we use many different plates with uh, our twin sets that we have in our technical diving program, we have to uh, be careful, uh, very careful of the length of the studs uh, that we have. Okay, so just remember that's another issue that you need to verify. You need to verify when you, uh, when you do this. In summary, some of the uncommon techniques used in this procedure were to grind the stud ends flat for more leverage, to use non-skid strips inside the tank bands to prevent dissimilar metal galvanic corrosion, to assemble the system with the tanks upright rather than laying down flat, to install the tank bands from the top over the valves rather than from the bottom and to verify that the stud lengths work with a variety of plates. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.